Yeah, this your boy C. Mully from Charleston, South Carolina, checking in with my girl Tampa Miss. They got industry most wanted. Mully. A hundred bowls going in two days, it's time to re-up No more highways, no baggage claims, front door service Remember cooking, bagging up, yeah, scrap with a 30 Now I'm wasting them tips, effings and drinks, only call birdies My bitch say she want a tummy tuck in her breast loaf I flew her out to Cali, Columbia, called Porcelain All this Louis and Pro Hey, what's going on, man? It is your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are live on the Industry's Most Wanted Podcast Industries. Big Industry's Most Wanted, not the wanted. little one I got Charleston, South Carolina in the building. Yo, see yo. Millie, what's going on? Give me some love first what's and happening? foremost. What's Boom. Happening? It's good to see you, bro. Yeah, good to see you too. It's been a little minute, like at least a couple years since we've seen each other. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But we've both been working, busy. Yeah, grinding. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure. Go ahead and give us that official introduction. Yeah, that's your boy C. Mully. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Big Mully, C S E E. Dollar sign, you know what I'm saying? Checking in with my girl, Tampa Mystic. You know? Yeah, he's out here working, man. Well, listen, we definitely got a lot to talk about um, because you've really tapped in on the music industry on, on both sides, you know, kind of doing like the management role, yeah. but you're an artist yourself. Yeah. Um, take us back, Charleston, South Carolina. Is that what you grew up at? Yeah, Charleston, South Carolina, where it's Ashley, yeah. Ardmore, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. What was it like growing up out there? Man, just like every old southern town, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> kind of fast paced but slow, you know. Um, we got different cultures, so, you know, it's Geechee Gala down there. So yes. We got different perspective on life just because of that, you know what I'm saying? So, so real quickly, for the people that don't understand Geechee, okay. break it down. What is What does it exactly mean? Is it a cultural way of life? Yeah, um, Geechee is like... Um, it's basically like an old African dialect. It's um, well, sixty three percent of the African American slaves that came to um, America came to the port in Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. So the locals, which I'm a local, we still kind of still got like that old, you know, African accent a little bit. I love it. So it makes us sound a little Bohemian, Jamaican, yeah, Creole type stuff like that. I love it. I've always loved the accent. You know what I'm saying? But I think a lot of people don't understand where the, the history of it, the culture of it. So thank you for breaking it down for us. Um, when did music start coming into play? And what did you do first? Because you wear multiple hats. You do different things. Um, I really started music back in... Well, I've been doing music all my life. Yeah. But I really started when I... um. Ended up in the penitentiary at 17. I said, well, I'm going to start um, dropping and stuff like that. So I put out my first album when I came home in 2000. I came home 2008. Yeah. I dropped my first album in 2000, like 9 or 10. Okay. And I've been pushing it ever since. Definitely. So you were incarcerated for some time. You had to sit down for a minute. You know what I'm saying? During that time, is that when the, the kind of the music started coming in? Were you writing when you were incarcerated? Yeah, I wrote my first album, um, Ghetto Ghoul, Hard Living 101. Yeah. Me and my partner when I was locked up on my first day. Definitely, definitely. You said you were 17. Yeah, I was 17. How did that change your life? You were so young. You were still, you know, kind of a baby, you know, at 17. You know, yeah. like, how did that change your life? Made me man up, made me realize that, you know, people will put you somewhere. Yes. And, you know, I didn't really have as much responsibilities back then, but it, it just made me just have a different perspective on, on things, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It, it, listen, it will teach you some life lessons. It'll yeah. make you grow up, you know, yeah. probably a whole lot faster, yeah. you know, but I'm the type of person that I always want to find the positive in every situation and the positive in that, like you said, it, it made you a man. It made you grow up and understand at an early age, I never want to go back there again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a lie. I ended up back there again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're human. Yeah. We are not perfect. We all make mistakes. We don't. I don't believe in taking losses necessarily. It's it's lessons that we endure throughout our life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like who who are anybody to pass judgment on someone? We all make mistakes, but a lot of us don't get caught. Right. There are some things I could have been incarcerated for. I just didn't get caught. Right. You get what I'm yeah, saying? That's a blessing too. That's a blessing. <laughs> so it's like you know. I listen, it's a part of life, but you're here now to talk about it. And that's the biggest blessing right there. Yeah. You know, most definitely. So you started writing while you was incarcerated, yeah. wrote your first album. What was yeah. the title of it? Um, Ghetto Ghoul. Hard Ghetto Ghoul. Hard Living 101. Definitely. Yeah. I bet there was a lot of emotion poured into that because you were in a time in your life where you had to sit down. Was could, could, Do we hear a lot of emotion in that album? Yeah, 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 yeah. More, more. I was younger, so my mind frame was a little different at yeah. that time. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't even say, well, prison made me a man, but it kind of hardened me, too. At yes. that time, I thought it was like a badge of honor because I didn't have no um, 
and responsibilities. So it kind of, well, like I say, it, it molded me, but it made me a little worse. Yeah. So in, in that music right there, you can kind of tell that like, I, I had my chest out a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And coming back out, you know, kind of to the civilian life per mm-hmm. se, just like someone who comes out of the military, it's a major adjustment. Mm-hmm. Because you're living under someone else's roof, per se, yeah. abiding by their rules, coming back out into, you know, society. It's probably a major adjustment for people. Yeah. Definitely. So you got out. How soon after you got out did you record your first record? Um, probably in 2009. Yes. I had to come home and get some paper together. So I hit the ground running. And then <laughs> once I accumulated some money, I said, well, I'm going to start dang on, you know sticking to why I playing while I was in, uh, locked up and stuff like that. Yeah, most definitely. Since that time till now, I know you got a recent album out that we're going to talk about. How many albums have you put out? Um, I want to say before this last album, probably like eight or nine. What? Yeah. Eight or nine. Eight or nine. That's a lot, bro. You you got a lot to get off your chest. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot to talk about. So if we went back and listened to that first album that you released... When you got out of incarceration versus the album that you fairly recently released, what are we going to hear different? You hear the growth. You yeah. hear the, uh, the quality difference. My perspective changed because, see, I was like, what? I was 20, 21 at yeah. that time. You know, now I'm in my 30s. So, you know, since then I grew up, experienced more. Got family now. Got family, got kids, got three boys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, it's bigger than you. Yeah. Yeah. It's bigger than you. When we have kids, it instantly becomes bigger than us. Yeah, yeah. Your that was your oldest son that I just had the pleasure of meeting. Yeah, that was my he was so boy. handsome and so <laughs> polite. I was just like, what a positive young man. It sounds like you you and your wife did an amazing job of raising him. Yeah. How did it change your life when he was born? Um, see, when he was born, I kind of planned him. So I was twenty five when he was born. So yeah, it, it made me, you know, realize that I got a provide for somebody else before I provide for myself. So that's right. Smarter and stuff like that. Absolutely. And you probably are now more proactive rather than reactive to situations. Yeah. You think about your moves now because yeah. you got a family to, to take yeah, care of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, that, that that's the beautiful thing about having a family and having kids is it really changes us for the better. It instills some positivity in us. Definitely. Um, for people who have not had the opportunity to hear your music, this Kind of, I know, without boxing yourself in, kind of describe the style of music that you're creating currently. Um, I really, I really do like trap rap, but like it's conscious. Like my name C, so it's like soul every element. Yes, like that's what my homeboy gave me. But it's like C because I see a lot of stuff. So basically, my music is like a, like basically everything. I try to give them everything, like melodic rap, trap music, yes, conscious, conscious rap, club music. So. That's what it is, you know what I'm saying? When I put a body of work together, I try to put everything into that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely, because that is going to open it up to a broader audience. Yes. You're creating a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah, so if you don't like this, you might like this. If you like this type of music, you won't like this, you know what I'm saying? So on the album, it'll probably be about three or four that everybody can gravitate to. Definitely. Are you at all interested in ever tapping in and doing other genres of music outside of like rap and hip hop? Yeah, a little bit of pop. Or something. Yeah. I could do a little harmonizing. I know that's right. I'm in uh, ghost writing too, you know what I'm saying? I'm open to everything, you know. Yeah. Let's talk about that because you do a lot of different things. You're not just a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like when I met you, you were, you know, with working with another artist. Um, talk about all the hats that you wear or have worn throughout your journey in music. Um, I do management for artists. I'm an artist developer. I got my own um, clothing line. I'm in the process of starting my label and stuff like that. I got a label that I'm under, but yeah. me and my partner, Twin D, we working in the, 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 a joint venture so we could partner out with um, bigger labels and stuff like that so we could artists develop artists and get them in a the shopping period to get the majors and stuff like that. That is something that I really feel like right now, I don't know about other genres, but like in the hip hop world, we are lacking artist development. The labels aren't providing that anymore. They used to. How important is it for you with the artists you're working with to make sure you develop them and and put them in the right perspective of where they need to be in the music industry? Um, Artist development is very important because if you're not developed, you you basically can't be a, a, a 
a brand, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, the music business now is it's about music, but it's also about branding and stuff like that. So you gotta know how to you conduct yourself a certain way, how to you know monetize your music, how to speak, how to you know um, perform, how to entertain and stuff like that. You know, even your image and all that stuff. All that gotta be in sync with what you're trying to sell. So you gotta dot all those eyes and cross all those T's so that when you box up this this package and you present it to the world, that is able to be consumed by the masses man that was the perfect way to put it 100 percent. you're like packaging them up and presenting them to the yeah, world selling the product yes exactly because they are a brand yeah. they are a brand how did you get into artist management basically i i didn't have no help so you know i want to be that helping hand to people that's that genuinely need it and that i think you know got the talent i believe in so just giving people the opportunity that i never had yeah Let's let's talk about that a little bit deeper because there are artists out here and I don't I respect everybody's hustle, but there are some artists that I feel like maybe they're not quite ready for management yet because they don't even have their business together. They need that artist development. At what point would an artist come to you and you'd be like, you know what, you are an artist that I want to manage? Like what do they have to have going on and what do you see in them to say, you know what, that's a client I'd want to manage? Um for one, I, I really just I when people come to me now, I kind of be like brushing them off because I'm I'm, I'm more so a, let me get the real thing done. So for me to, to work with somebody, I got to see that they got something like some talent, some drive. Um, you know, they got to be humble because, you know, the ego is a, is, a, is a big thing, you know, in this game. So basically, I just got to really believe in you. Yeah. And then we'll put everything else together. Definitely. Absolutely. They have to have a work ethic. You can't want it more than them. Exactly. And I see that a lot where yeah. people like that are in a, in a position like yourself saying we can't want it more than you. Exactly. Because then you go waste your time and your energy and be running and running nowhere fast. You know what I'm saying? Man, facts. It's like that hamster wheel. <laughs> yeah. Working harder than them. They ain't doing, you know, they ain't showing up on time. They ain't enthusiastic they ain't in the studio they ain't want to put out no content how you how you gonna move the ball man and you're a great role model for them because you have all that in perspective he was on time today you know what i'm saying um but you you are working you're getting music out you're getting content out you're doing stuff like this i think you make a perfect role model because you understand both sides you understand the artist side and the management side are you currently managing any artists um right now i'm artists developing um two girls okay um, poison and raquel dope um they got this group but they also stand alone really poison is like you know the one that we're focusing on right now but we package them up together as a group called rp and you're from Charleston, South Carolina, two young ladies. You know what I'm saying? P O um, I Z O N N underscore on um, Instagram and Life of Rock Hill. I love that. Instagram. I love that. All right. So you got two young ladies that you're working right right now. You're packaging them up, like we just said. Yeah. Do you feel like right now is a great time for women in the industry? Yeah, I think so. I love it. I Thank so. you. I think so. Yeah. 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 No, that is really, really dope because I just feel like sometimes that women don't get the shine that they should. Yeah. Um, but when they have someone like you behind them that believes in them and sees their vision the way they do, they're destined to win. Exactly. Definitely. Are you open to taking any new clients right now if it makes sense for both you guys? If it makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. Now, let me ask you this. Would you be open to managing an artist who is not local to you? Yeah, true indeed. Okay. Yes. Dope. But if there's artists out here, because I want to throw this out there, you know what I'm saying, potentially to get some artists to come your way. If there's an artist who is lacking artist development, which a lot of y'all artists are lacking it, and it's no shade, it's just we want to help. If there's an artist who's lacking artist development, whether they're in your city or they live here or somewhere else, how do they reach out to you? Where do they get started with working with you on that aspect? Um, reach out to me to the, on the gram and let me see what you got. You know what I'm saying? The majority of the time, if, I, 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 if, I, if I'm interested in somebody, I'll probably try to find them. Yes. Because I, I always researching and looking at new artists and stuff like that. Understood. If an artist comes to you and they're really serious about working, they got a nice little budget in place, but they just need help, right? Mm -hmm. Are you open to helping them getting their paperwork and all that stuff together too if they don't have that in place? Yeah, I'll give them some free game because it's love easy. It. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to get it together yourself, you know. 
everything's on 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 um Google. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Sound exchange, media biz, um, BMI, ASCAP, whatever. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's, it's right there at your fingertips. Definitely. Have you ever thought about starting like a podcast or anything and just like, you know, maybe, a, you know, something like that? Because I think that would really draw a lot of people in and it could put some spotlight on you as an artist. I'm just saying. I, I thought about it, but, you know, not not right now. Understood. Yeah. You got a lot on your plate. Yeah. OK, so you you do artist development, you do artist management. You also are an artist yourself. Yeah. Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> Look at these socks. I need a motive. <laughs> I always ask artists when they come to me with merch, do you have socks? Like, I always ask them that because I love different cool kind of socks. Right. Look what he handed me today <laughs> along with the shirt. Tell us about your merch, man. It's beautiful. Um, I love it. I love the colors, my, too. My merch is an um, extension of my company, Money to Motive Empire, LLC. And I basically started that to legitimize myself. I started off um, pressing out shirts and advanced the hoodies then i did i used to go to super line up here and grab the um track suits and go get them pressed up yeah then i end up finding a um a company out there in pakistan so it just started expanding absolutely absolutely when it comes to merch and stuff like that i think outsourcing it outside the u.s is a way to go right yeah. price wise it's price cost wise. efficient you get good quality yeah. clothing you know what i'm saying most definitely so any advice there's a lot of artists that come through that want to start merch that's i asked them about you know future business ventures any tips that you could offer them starting out um start small um be creative and um just be consistent, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um start start a business. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it, make sure you get your business in order as well. Like get your LLC, get your Duns and Brass number, get your EIN, you know what I'm saying, and leverage, you know, business credit as well, because you don't know, you might be leaving certain things on the table if you if you if you don't do that, you know what I'm saying? Man, you're like a plethora of knowledge. <laughs> Everything he's telling you is 100% accurate. And thank you for breaking that down, too, because a lot of people start a brand, but they don't even own it. Right. They don't have oh, the yeah, LLC. and trademarks, too. All that. It's mm. so important. Get you an entertainment attorney to help you. If you don't yeah. know how to do it or don't feel like doing it, hire you a good entertainment attorney, and they'll get, all, get you squared away. Exactly. That is dope. Uh, do you do custom orders? I used to. Now okay. I just, you know. Because you're ordering them in bulk, probably. Yeah, so I just do, like, seasonal stuff. I come out with, like, a capsule, and I release it like that right That here. is dope. So what right now can people buy from you on your merch line? Um, right now, you could buy um, collar shirts, jeans, socks, shorts, T-shirts, um, Money to Motive, well, Money to Motive, um, dot com. Dope. You, you got hats? Order. I used to have hats, but I, I, I'm in the process of getting a new vendor. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Yeah, that's probably can be a little here and there because, yeah. you know, vendors maybe come and go or their prices significantly <laughs> go up or something like that. Right. So you have to shop it around. So, like, trucker hats, I stuff had, like that. I had um, toboggans, uh, scullies, and I yep. had, I had um, little trucker hats at one time. Yeah. Get you some beanies, too, man. I love I, me some I, I beanies. beanies. That's why I said the ball guns. <laughs> the ball gun, that's the penitentiary. Word. No, that's so funny. My yeah. significant other, he always says, where's my toboggan? I'm like, your toboggan? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the beanie hat. But no, like even the bucket hats. You know what I'm talking about? The little bucket well, hats. I haven't done that yet. Those are dope. Like, you know, back in the day, people wore kangles and stuff like that. Now it's bucket hats. I still wrote kangles on my new album. I, I, kangle. I <laughs> love them. I came from that era. Yeah. Shout out to LL man he used to rock that kango man yeah, most yeah. definitely um what are you working on out in south carolina right now are you like working on any events or anything like that in your city or is it you more stepping outside the city right now i just i, I i'm planting my seed in the city but i'm also you know i'm promoting outside as well yeah because where i'm from it's not really no infrastructure for music like nobody hasn't really done it like there's people that has gotten close but I believe that if you're a shark, you got to get out in the ocean. I don't want to be a shark in the fish tank. So I'm out here, you know, networking, you know, expanding, promoting, you know, putting my money in the right places, you know, building the right relationships so that I can 
um, what's the word? Like a scale. Yeah, definitely. I love all the analogies that you provide because it really makes people visually see what you're talking about. Like you said, you don't want to be a shark in a fish tank. You got to be in the big ocean out there swimming around. That's what you're doing now. You swam out here to Atlanta. (laughs) He's going to be tapping with the OG later on today. You know, most definitely that is fire. Let's talk about your creative process a little bit. Are you a writer? Yeah, I'm a writer. Okay. Are you writing to the aspect of like, where you putting pen to paper or is it something you're typing in on your phone? Pen to paper, phone. Both. Okay. Freestyle. I punch in or whatever. The yeah. majority of my, my great music, like the albums, I sit down and I even pull out my phone or I write it on paper. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because, I listen, everybody's creative style is a little different. Some people only go to the studio and kind of like freestyle punch in. I know if I was doing music, I'd want to be a writer. I'd want to sit down and like really think about it. Where do you find yourself at the most? Is it driving at home with your family when you start coming up with the concepts for your music? Or is it just kind of sporadic? It's sporadic. Yeah. Sporadic. It's any any place really. Yeah. You know, if I if I got if I got a fire beat or if I'd be like, all right, I gotta do these couple of songs. I don't care if I'm in the car, bathroom, <laughs> studio, you know, outside on the block, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get it done. Absolutely. You can put references on your phone so you can come back to it later yeah. on and, and create to that. Do you write music without actually having a beat in mind first? I could do it both ways. Yeah. Yeah. That like is my dope. first album. Like get a goal or was up no beat. Yeah, you, know you wrote that while you were incarcerated, yeah. and then after the fact, how hard is it? Is it difficult to find a beat that matches the song that you've written? Not if you got a good producer. You 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 have a producer that can cook up the beat at the at the time, or you might be going through the um through the little you know the folders and stuff like that. And you might find something that be like oh the, the, this ride to the beat. Yeah. Shout out the chief on the beat. He produced my first couple of albums. You know. Mm. What I'm saying? He's from your city? Yeah, from Charleston. That's dope. Kept it in the hometown. Yeah. Link up with Jay Fresh, too. He's from South Carolina, and he's a phenomenal producer. Okay. In fact, he's a, a stellar award winning on the on the gospel side, you okay. know, engineer, producer, but he does all genres of music. So, okay. you know, maybe tap in with him, too. You know, spread your wings a little bit, but shout out to your producer who knocked out them two albums for yeah. you, man. It he sounds knocked like- out a lot more singles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, Chief, Chief on the V. Sounds like you guys got good chemistry. Yeah, that's my Who's favorite. engineering your music for you on the mixing and mastering? Um, I, um, I I really record at 21st Century. That's my partner, but he got like a studio that was around for a long time. So I, I go lay down there, and then I might send it off to um, Grown. Grown's out here. He used to work at um, Street is Egg. Okay. I got another partner, um, Trizzy. He, he mixes and master. And then I was um, starting to work with a guy out of Columbia. He does a lot of um, mixing and mastering. Um, I mix nation. Yeah. Have you at all tapped into the Dolby Atmos yet? No. Look into that. Dolby Atmos is like the next level of mixing and mastering. Okay. Like, it's similar to like what surround sound used to be, but it's like greater than that. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it's like when you when someone does Adobe Atmos mix and master on there, if you listen to it in a setting where there's speakers, it literally you can hear it bouncing off. That's the new that's the future right there. Okay, Dolby Atmos. They, Dolby Atmos. There's only one Dolby Atmos studio in here in Atlanta, and I happen to be good friends with it. Shout out to Soul Asylum Studio. Got to plug that in real quick, okay. but eventually what's going to happen is like some of these playlists like apple playlists they will not allow you to get on there if you unless you have adobe atmos mix so that's the that's the future so just keep that in mind you know and you don't have to do it with every song because it's fairly expensive just the the major ones that you want to put out there because that's what's going to really set you apart from a lot of the artists that are out there right now so let's talk about this record it's called motion featuring scooter yeah you know what i'm saying shout out to young scooter man like shout out scooter Definitely rock with him. He's been making moves for years, and he's still out here working. Um, tell us about how this record came together. Um, I've been rocking with Street for, for almost a decade plus, you know what I'm saying? He um, got some family down there in Walterboro and stuff like that. Mm. And, you know, we've been in contact for a little minute, so I just reached out to him. I had a song with him when I was younger on my first Determination album called Trafficking. So as the years going by, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to put him on a new song, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely. Did you guys shoot a visual for it yet? Yeah, motion. motion. It's already out there? It's out now on YouTube. Okay. So go run that up, motion, featuring C. Mully and Young Scooter. I love it. So the, the album that this is featured on is called Determination Grew With The Game. Yeah, Grew With The Game. So that's the spinoff of the first Determination album. I that's kind of like the second part to it? No, I got a couple of them. I got Determination, 
Then I got determination, success, a step away. Then I got determination, reloading, host of our swamp puzzle. And then I got determination, um, dreams and cases. I dropped that before my last bit in 2016. I had Love That's a Dead Bank Roll Fresh on that album. Mm. And then I went to prison for two and a half years, made parole, came home, dropped um, determination, still going and trying to see a mully. And that was two years ago. I started managing in the clothing line and yeah. all that stuff. And now, you know, two years later, here I am with Determination Group again. So that's a part of those albums that you were talking about. You have several yeah. albums. I love the fact that you made it kind of like a series. Yeah, Determination is like my thing. It's almost like Nipsey's Marathon. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Marathon continues, you. A hundred percent. So Determination is really a way of life for you. Yeah, yeah. It's a way of life because you've been through some stuff. You know, you've probably had some past traumas. We all have. You've had some adversity in your life, but you're here to talk about it, right. which is the biggest blessing. Right. Because there's some people your age, my age, that don't make it to our age, right? Exactly. So determination. Do you uh, do you speak positive affirmations into your life? Do you believe in, all like, manifestation and stuff? Time. Yeah. I listen to them at night all day. <laughs> How important is that for you, where you're at right now in your life? I believe in law, law and attraction, law, law of attraction in a lot of ways. So I feel like if you speak it, it gonna come, come into fruition. You know what I'm saying? Words are spells. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know when you spell something out, you casting a spell. So when you speak, it's a word. So that's what the Bible said: words are swords. So as you, you you speak it, you manifest it. So when I was young, I this is a little fun fact. When I was young, I used to speak a lot of you know different little things. When I was young, I used to speak a lot of little different things. So now I try to speak like positivity or things that I want to create. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And I've been seeing it come to um, fruition. Hundred percent, man. I've always been big on that. Like, you know, do you have a, a vision board or anything at the house? Like, where you like write your ideas down? I write my business plans out sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I believe that we had in order to achieve it, not only do we have to believe it, we have to see it. You got to see it. I'm a very visual person. You know what I'm saying? My partner always tell me, see, man, you need to buy a um, little, little. A whiteboard. A whiteboard and write down your you stuff do. in 30 days and stuff. I, I kind of got it all in my head. <laughs> <laughs> you know I know. And some people are good at that. Yeah. The, at the end of the day, as long as you are able to hold yourself accountable and make those things happen, it doesn't matter if it's on a whiteboard, if it's in your head. I personally put it on my phone. Right. That's how I hold myself accountable. Okay. You know, that's important. Within your music, do you have a signature ad lib that you use? Mm, you haven't developed like, one yet. I might say Mully. Yeah. Like, like, like Mully. You know what I'm saying? Other than that and all, I, I kind of play with it. It used to be in it yeah. back when I was younger. I, I, like, in it is like ain't it. But it's a geeky word, like in it. Like, you having fun in it. Oh, yeah, in it. Definitely. Right. Absolutely. So I like the fact that you, but you incorporate your name in there, though. Yeah, Millie, yeah. That's dope. That is really, really I revamped the Millie while I was in prison last time, too. Tell us about the revamp. She, I just had one something a little different, you know, yeah. like everybody been calling me C, C murder when I was younger. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just come, come with the C at one time. But when I went to prison, I'm like, I'm going to see some millions. So I'm going to say C Millie. I love that. That's that. Those that positive affirmations yeah, yeah. right there. That's once the I manifestation. Them, once I touch them mullies, it might be C billions. <laughs> <laughs> C Billy. <laughs> I don't know what's beyond that. Is there anything bigger than the billies? C trillions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah truly. <laughs> C truly. You're gonna keep going. That is funny. Hey, at least that's a part of the growth. That's a part of the process. Yeah. So you got the merch line. Tell them one more time the website where people can shop with you. Money to motive. Um, dot com. Yeah, you got um. You can shop the merch on there, or you can type in cmillion.com, and it'll lead you to that, too. Definitely. Are there other business ventures that's on your radar? You don't have to necessarily what, say what they are if it's personal for you, but is there other business ventures on your radar currently? Yeah, um, real estate, I'm mm. into that, um, trucking. I recently got my CDL. I don't really want to drive, but I, 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 I'm a believer of if you can't cook, or can I say this? If you can't cook crack, how you going to how you expect to get your profit. Uh, you know, 100%. You know what I'm saying? So uh, in order for me to hire somebody to be my driver, I don't want nobody to be able to say, oh, no, you don't know how to drive. You need me. You know what I'm saying? So I went and got my CDL, my Twit card, and stuff like that, so I could start my own, um, you know, logistics company, stuff like that, um, and promotion and 
the label and stuff like that. All yeah. this development. No, you're absolutely right. You want to, if you're going to put somebody in a position within your company, you want to make sure you know how to do that too. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a coach on the football field. They know everything about football. The game, yeah. The so game. Yeah. So you can't run no, 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 no you can't run that knowing me, you know. Definitely, 100%. Anything else that you got coming up or in the works that we need to know about? No, right now, just check out that Determination Group, the game out now on all streaming platforms. Um, you know, go um, run that motion up, you know what I'm saying? Look out for that Tremor, who Tremor featuring uh, Trigger 500 kit. That going to drop soon. Check out my artist, um, Poison and Raw Kale. Okay, go buy the merch, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Tune in on, you know, Instagram, on TikTok, you know. Definitely. Tell them, tell them all the places that they can find you. Oh, you can look me up on TikTok at um, C Millions, the biggest. On TikTok, um, S E E underscore Mully. On um, Instagram, C S E E M O E eighty eight on TikTok. I mean, not TikTok, Twitter. On X. That's yeah, X. Right. X. I, I know. I still call it Twitter yeah, too. X. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's uh, funny and ironic because I do a lot of live streaming interviews for people who can't come here. I'll do them virtually, mm -hmm. and I live stream on YouTube, Twitter, X. Twitch and Facebook. Do you know that majority of the people that tune in and watch it are on X? I would have thought that would have been the least place I get the traction. I get more people tuning in live streaming while I'm on there. I'm like, maybe I need to tap into to X a yeah, little that's bit a more. Different algorithm, and they, they let you do all kinds of stuff on this. So. Yeah, no, I be seeing <laughs> porn come down my timeline. I'm like, like yo, God, crazy. <laughs> they let everything Every, fly. Everything Shout fly. out to Elon Musk, man. Everything he don't fly. give a damn. <laughs> oh yeah, subscribe to my YouTube too. You know what I mean? See, see Melly on YouTube. Yes, because they got to check out the new visual yes, with Scooter. Right, yeah. Motion. Yep. Out now. So make sure you guys go tap in with his movement. You know what I'm saying? Go get the record. Go stream it. Go run it up. Do you have any performances or anything on the way? Or is that not really something you're working on right now? Oh, no, I'm doing shows. I'm um, doing shows. I got a show um, May 25th in Columbia, South Carolina. Okay. I'm about to go on a little mini tour. Um, I, I didn't announce it yet because he, it's in the works. But um, I got a show in Orlando mm. on... Um, I think that's June six, and then I'm gonna be in Atlanta at um it was eleven forty five yeah on June seventh, and then yeah we we getting booked out right now definitely. So you got like a promo tour that you guys are in the midst of putting together. No, you and your team. It's a paid tour. Oh, it's a paid tour. Uh, I'm getting well. I I can't say paid tour. Paid shows. You know? Understood. Understood. Definitely. Yeah. That is dope, man. That's that's something that I think every artist at some point in time, as long as they got the budget to do it, or if, if they're not getting paid, put yourself on tour. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Buy ons and stuff like that. I'm working on that with um a dude that's um doing a tour for G Herbal too and stuff like mm. that. So he, he got me um he about to put me in. The that is dope. I know a lot of artists tap in like on the Live Nation and stuff like that. They can, like you said, kind of buy in to open up for these major acts. Do you find that to be beneficial? Like, say you you did buy into a show and you got a G Herbal or somebody that's opening, or no, excuse me, that's a headliner, but you're an opening act. Do you find that to be beneficial? Yeah, if you out there networking, you um promoting, you know what I'm saying? You touching the people as you um you rap and you just can't go out there and just rap and you got to put on the show yeah you got to leave them people with their scan cards and you got to you know you got you got to go out there and promote yourself because yeah they might see you on, on on the stage but is it on shazam if they want mm. shazam and can they go to the parking lot and go to their car and see your your you know your your stack your, your poster your your flyer on the car definitely um are you backstage networking with the promoters and you know the, the people in the entourage and stuff like that you know you got to you got to really go out there and make it beneficial all around the board. You just can't go out there and just think, oh, I'm a rap, and that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Unless you got a banger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't choose that. That's up to the fans. Right. Absolutely. Do you typically, when you do these shows, bring merch with you to sell? I take merch everywhere I go. Yeah. I love it. I take merch. I take flyers. Yeah. I, 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 I've been trapping out the like, trunk, huh? Yeah, trapping out the trunk. <laughs> I, I from the old days, so, you know, I from the CD era. No, nah, facts. You know I mean? so, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and really, just to touch on it ever so briefly, a lot of artists are getting back, not necessarily CDs, but they're getting back to selling their music, like direct to consumer, because these... Uh, Spotify's and stuff like that, they're not paying out, and then a lot of artists are getting their music taken down, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So direct to to uh, consumer, I see a lot of artists going back to doing that. Yeah, 
that's a good thing because you can directly get you can get your money right then and there. Yes, I miss the CDDs. You know, I do too. I do CDs. too. You know, and I understand times change. Things have to evolve. You know what I'm saying? But hey, she I could have made ten grand off a thousand CDs. Uh, exactly, exactly. I, I don't know if you're familiar with or have checked out Even Biz. Even Biz, it's a website where you can upload your music and sell it on there. So you can put it on there. Say you put your single on there for a dollar. Okay. I can come along and say, you know what? I'm going to pay him $3. And boom, you get paid right then and there. Okay. They just take us. It's free to use their services as far as uploading it. They just take a percentage out. But you're still going to get paid way more than these, but Spotify and do, Apple. Do they distribute it for you as well? Or you got to. They don't do the distribution. That's strictly on their website. So you get paid for streams on their website and you get paid for selling. And I think you can sell your merch on there as well. Okay. So check that out. Even dot biz B I Z. Um, you know, I've been seeing more and more artists register with them. La Russell is a part of yeah, the, I've, I've been thinking about that when you were saying all that, I've been shout out to La Russell, man. He, he's changing the game. I like, well, he, he ain't even changing the game. He just doing, doing it the right way. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I, what I love about La Russell is he puts out a lot of short form content and he'll do one take, mm -hmm. like a literally a one take video shoot. He don't have all, you know, all these extra scenes and it comes out fire. Mm -hmm. So to me, that sets the bar, not saying don't go get dope video shoots with multiple scenes, but if you're balling out a budget and that's what you got to do, pick up one of these and you could yeah, do a one take like joint. You can always put your content on the like, facts. Hey, La Russell's a content guru. He is. Smart. He is, Very most smart. definitely. Tell everybody one more time your social media. Um, C Mully, S E E underscore Mully, M I L L I on Instagram. Um, C Millions with a Z, the biggest on um, TikTok. S E E M O E 88 on um, X. <laughs> <laughs> and C Mully on um, YouTube. Make sure you run that YouTube up, man. Subscribe. When they go to look for you on the digital platforms, is C with the dollar sign? Yes, C okay. with the dollar sign. Um, S -E, well, dollar sign E-E. -E, and all my music will pop up. All them, 10 albums, everything. You know, singles, everything will pop up. Dope, most definitely. I know you have a lot of people that love you, support you. Who do you want to give thanks to? Who do you want right. to shout out to? Shout out to God. Shout out to my kids. Shout out to my city. Shout out to my section of ways. That Moya. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Tampa Mystic for having me. Of course. You know Absolutely. Shout out to all the real ones in the world. You know what I'm saying? Pushing. Determination. Mully. Facts. Shout out to yourself too, bro. Yeah, shout out to me. <laughs> you out here making it happen. You yeah. really overcame stuff in your life and didn't allow that to hold you back. You took accountability for your actions and said, you know what? I'm going to man up and make things happen. And you did that. I'm proud of you, bro. Because a lot of people don't. They always want to blame the system. They want to blame other people when it's like, it starts with us. Right. So shout out to you, man. You're out here doing your thing. I got one last question. We live. Industry. Told you big industry is most wanted, not the little one. We got Charleston, South Carolina in the building. Shout out to C. Millie, man. Go ahead and tell everybody what makes you the industry's most wanted. Um, my determination. That was going on. My grind, my hustle. You know what I'm saying? That would make me different <laughs> absolutely get to it give me some love one more time man appreciate you being here yeah appreciate you facts we up out of here y'all <laughs> vacuum sealer anchor and water brought fortune free bands i get free grants off of 20 if i tag a dollar on everyone that's a nicky i be having all kind of flavors you can't be picky i've been having brief nightmares when i've been busy Two million years ever gon' fall, you must be kidding I ain't trying to look but compete, I'm trying to get it I got ties for contract killers who stand on business I got young baby stables who bought spinners, some straight hitters She got so much ass, I got motion We got so much bags for the low ski You can get a tag on your toe quick And we don't fuck with rats, fuck the police Free man having motion, we bust traps wide open. I fuck with tons of real niggas like C, having motion. They pray I fall off, you know I rap on my spell time. I get money six ways, clientele all mine. Money over bitches, loyalty over snitching. It costs for this recipe, so stay up by my kitchen. You can't take the pressure, ain't no need to be in them. These dirty streets, I have a nigga shaking and trembling. You niggas ain't no hustler, you some fucking pretenders. You ain't never made a jewel, you a fucking beginner. And you know we stay grinding January, December. Keep it real, never fold, only thing I remember. Street. She got so much ass, I got motion. We got so much bags for the low ski. You can get a tag on your toe quick. And we don't fuck with rats, fuck the police.